This is the Ford F-150 rescue that we were going to try to do and uh, things in life happen and we just didn't get to it like we wanted to. But we do have a bunch of parts for it. The gentleman that owns this truck is wanting to come pick it up next week. Um, so we have started out here and I've got my son over here and he is working up front. He is getting the master cylinder swapped out and uh, he's fixing to bleed it out. We're going to try to bleed it on the truck. I know you're supposed to bench bleed, but you know, we're going to try to bleed it on the truck. But I am back here in the back and I'm working on drum brakes. So we're going to have a little quick discussion about drum brakes. And my grandson is over there mowing grass. First thing we're going to talk about is we got some new shoes. These are what they call, uh, these are from Rock Auto. They're True Arc Dynamic Friction Company. Uh, I've never used these before, but just looking at them, they look like they're a good quality product. Let's see if we can tell what the country of origin is. Ah, of course, China. But hey, they, they appear to be good quality and uh, compared to what's on the truck, they're fine. One of the things, if you're doing rear brake shoes, and one of the things you absolutely have to have just about every time, especially on these old ones, is a brake hardware kit. And here's what's cool. Motorcraft still makes a kit, even for this 79 model Ford truck. You can still get good quality Motorcraft hardware stuff. So let's uh, let's get in here and uh, now we're gonna talk about tools. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about real quick is tools. If you're gonna do drum brakes, it's kind of important that you go get the right tools. Um, these are the ones I have collected over the years. Some are Craftsman, some are Snap-on, and some are Mac. Um, one of the best spring pliers that you can get is this spring tool right here. It's got a spring hook here for grabbing. You've got this one for rolling uh, some of the springs off with this little special little hook on top. And this hook end is good for grabbing and pulling springs and putting them back on. It is a Craftsman 46947. Everybody knows Craftsman's kind of going away, so I don't know if you can find these, but you see what it looks like. So you should be able to, they, they there are many companies make this. This is an exclusive to Craftsman. Um, the next thing that you want, if we're undoing the uh, anchor springs that hold the brake shoes to the backing pad, is a, a like a cup spring tool. And let's see if I can even make this out. It is hard to read. It was a snap-on B1356C as best I can read. Hit it with a little brake clean. Let's see. Yeah, B1356C. And I don't know if these part numbers are still good on some of these old tools. eBay may have them. Um, and this is a Mac. This is another spring tool. And if you look, it's got the same kind of uh, end as this multi tool. Okay. And it's got the same kind of end on that arm. This is just a good all around multi tool right here, this pliers. And everybody needs a good brake spoon for adjusting the brakes. The, uh, I didn't mention this Mac number. This Mac number is an S13B, okay? And the uh, Craftsman brake spoon is a 47362. And like I said, none of these tools are exclusive. I mean, many companies make them. So now we've talked about tools. Let's get in here and we're gonna uh, show you how to use these spring tools to disassemble everything. All right, as you can well see on this side right here, this spring, this is why I say you should have a hardware kit anytime you're messing with old brakes and you don't, you've never been into them and don't know. Um, if this was my truck, I could probably get by with a, some brake clean and a hardware kit and put all this back together and I think these brake shoes would be fine. But this, um, this truck is somebody else's so I'm going to 
replace everything because you don't know how the lamination is going to do on these where they're attached to the backing plate drive them for a little while and then that lamination comes off and boom you're back in here again um, but I'm doing this for somebody else so I want to go ahead and try to make sure that it's right so let's get in here and show you how these tools work this is that spring tool I was talking about where you can get in here and you put put it behind the spring and just twist and that jumps in behind the spring and then it just walks it off. Try to keep your springs in order. I'm gonna lay them up here on top of this leaf spring. Just give it a twist. It comes right off and this one actually secures the, well, we may have to wait to take that one off because this one actually, let's see if we can do this, there we go. It secures the, uh, the pivot for the, uh, self-adjuster there it comes so try to keep your parts together before we go any further one thing i would suggest if you've never done brake uh drum brakes before is to take a picture of it okay before you ever tear it down and the other thing to remember is the other side is the exact mirror of this side so only do one side at a time all right now Let's get in here and we'll take this cup off. You know how handy and quick that is. All this hardware is rusty, rusty, rusty. So we're gonna lay them all up here on top of the spring. Lay it up there, keep them together. And then we'll get our hardware kit out and we'll identify and match everything up. This, whoop, let's get this. This is your uh, park brake actuator bar. If you don't have that, you want, your park brake doesn't want to work. So, lay it up top and let's see. Here is self-adjuster cable which I don't know that it comes with one I sure hope so because this one is breaking rusting in two let's take a look at that hardware kit and see if it comes with that with the cables the rut row it does not come with the self-adjuster cables that's discouraging just try to keep in mind how all this stuff hooks together you can get it back together when it's time and of course you get this is your part brake arm and it's attached right here with the little c-clip and then you squeeze together that's one of the hardest things to get undone so you can change this piece out but it's, it's not terrible let's see if this is no nope, it's not seized hallelujah a lot of times you'll get in here and these self adjusters will be seized but we'll clean that up get some anti-seize on it and get it lubed up real good all right, so next thing we're gonna do before we go any further is we're gonna compare the brake shoes to make sure that they are the same, that they're designed the same, that they are the same width, and these are. But they make, oh, I don't know, seems like there's two or three different styles of brake shoes that they make, that they used for these old Ford trucks. This is a four by four, so just make sure that you uh, give all the information when you're looking these brake shoes up so you get the right ones. All right, they're the right width, they're the right design. Now, the next thing you need to try to keep in mind when you're putting your brake, brake shoes on, short shoe goes on the front, long shoe goes on the rear. There's two different lengths of braking material. You can see right there, I'll line them up on the bottom right here and you can see at the top, this shoe is longer. Long shoe to the rear, short shoe to the front. Now, let's get our can and brake clean. We're going to go ahead carefully. I've got a towel down to try to catch some of this mess getting on my driveway. If you can get a drain pan under it, that'd be great. I have had them where they were leaking oil and you have to come in here with some uh, real good parts cleaner. 
or some degreaser and degrease it real good before you get started. I think we're gonna get by with some brake clean. I don't know why we didn't order wheel cylinders for these, but these are not leaking, so we're gonna let them ride. Another thing to keep in mind when you're messing with this is try not to create a lot of dust with this stuff. Some of these old brake shoes, of course, as you may or may not know, depending on how old you are, could have asbestos. All right, so we're gonna try to spread that clip that we talked about. That's kind of a pain in the rear end. You can force a screwdriver down in between it, betwixt it. We got it started. See, it just wants to pivot on you. Oh, sorry. Get you knock back around here. There we go. You just have to keep working it and twist and spread. That's coming. Just taking its sweet time. There we go. Now we get it open on the back, we can walk it out. Boom, there it went. And the brake shoe is free. All right, this, there is a spring washer located back here. See if I can get it to come loose. I have to get a pocket knife out. I need a thin blade to slide in behind it. Freaking turn. Coming off. It's just crusty. There it went. What are you doing? What am I doing? Yeah. What are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Yeah. You're doing what? Lawn mowing the grass. Lawn mowing the grass. I got it. Huh? I hear some joy over there. Somebody's Get making something go their way. Uh, there was a what you got? That was rusted yeah. to the mouth. That's your gas. Show, that show the camera your gas. Unseize the clip so, and get the clip out whole. Put some gas in your mower. You can put some gas in your mower. Go ahead. Fill her up. Fill her up. There you go. Good job. Now show them where you put your gas can. Show them where you put. No, where you put? Where do you put the gas can? Show them where you put the gas can. Hey, we'll put it in there. Stick it in there. There you go. All right. Oh, no, it. It don't have no gas. Well, it don't got no gas. You just put some in it. No, it doesn't. I... Ain't got no gas in it. Ain't got no gas in it. That's right. Ah. Silly me. Silly me. <laughs> I didn't even do nothing. All right, go cut some grass. Oh, wow. oh no, it fell over. Oh no, it fell over. Okay, I'm not sure. Got sidetracked, not sure where I left off. But uh, I had to look these drum brake adjuster cables up on O'Reilly's. They actually have them in town and they're going to get them for me in about an hour. So we're going to hit the pause button on this brake on the rear drums for just a few minutes and uh, we're going to move on. We're going to do a rear brake line. Hopefully it's not too rusty. All right, so we've been back here messing around with this brake line. Uh, you can see there's a lot of rust. So you got to be real tender with these brake lines. So I got a little lube. Uh, the thing I had on me, the WD-40, 
went ahead and sprayed here and of course the brake line is trying to stick inside the nut so take your time hold the brake line and work it back and forth until you get the line broke free from the nut and up top they, uh, you can actually put a wrench to back the line up up there so that you can bust it loose um, so we're going to keep going and uh, get this line swapped out all right so we got the line off and what i wanted to show you is right here this block for the rear brake is also mounted with the axle vent and as you can see the, uh, the vent tube it was broken already so we're going to fix that so that the axle is venting up there where it's supposed to but you turn this out and it lets this line come off so we've got to we've kind of got to pause on this too because where this clip holds the brake line at the top up there in that bracket this brake line right here see that groove <coughs> holds it to that bracket right there well it broke because it's so rusty we're going to see if they might happen to have some more of these hopefully they do all right so uh, lone cameraman here got you on wide angle trying to get you to where you can see me talk and let me tell you what i need to tell you uh, first thing we need to do is i did uh is do a little organizing uh tearing it down things had kind of gotten jumbled around and messed up so took a minute organized and, that, and that's really important when you're doing a brake job with all these little trinkets and parts is try to stay organized um it help you get the job done a little better less confusion uh, there's a i know there's a lot of confusion on drum brakes people uh wig out and my son being one of them he said that he absolutely hated doing drum brakes well drum brakes aren't that aren't that big a problem they're not that once you've done a few times they're not that bad so try to stay organized keep your tools in, in neat in neat order and uh just take your time so first thing we're going to do is i'm going to open this bag of hardware and we're going to lay out just what springs that I need from it. Um, we did make a run a little while ago, and we did find here at O'Reilly's had uh, the, this is the uh, park brake. No, not park brake. This is the uh, self-adjuster cable. And this is what helps move the self-pull on the self-adjuster. Whenever you back up and the shoes rock a little bit, this is what helps pull the self-adjuster. And the one we had was about to break. So O'Reilly's had that in stock, two of them. Um, we went to Advance. We had to go to two different advances in two different cities real close to here. Still, I've been on the road for an hour and a half. Now, let's get this bag open and see what we need to get out of it. Tear it open. You're going to need one to two of everything in here let's see what spring is this it should be that bottom spring and it is i'll lay it there and match it with that one only one of those let's see and we'll lay that spring there to match that one and looks like there may be two of those are those springs nope those springs are not the same they're slightly different so you want to like i said you want to match your springs up Not the one I need, I don't think. Let's try this one. Yep, there it is. And you just match them by shape. And being that it's a motorcraft kit, they're going to be just like the factory stuff. All right, you've got a flat spring there. It goes on the park brake pad, uh, bar. And let's see, we're going to need got two new pins for the anchor. These are just about rusted in too. They're garbage. And let's see what else we've got. The mounting, little flat mounting spring. We've got, whoop, throw it down. Uh, we got two of those. 
and there should be a couple of cups in here which mount them and we got those okay so i think that these this kit even comes with the plug the rubber plug to uh cover up your a uh, adjuster hole so we're going to replace that too um, we've already got the wheel cylinder installed uh, not a big deal there you take your these pins that came with the old wheel cylinder that actually engaged the shoe and you just uh, clean them up and stick them into the new rubber on your new wheel cylinder so we'll set these to the side parts that we're not using right now we'll need on the other side all right I'll lay that there and uh next we're gonna get to mounting some brake shoes here all right so we talked about the self adjuster earlier well i've got it in my hands it's going to be reverse thread which is lefty tighty okay and i'll show you something on this adjuster that i thought was pretty interesting put that back on there it's got a thrust washer on the on the cap if you look right there it's actually listed as right side right under that little cap i thought that was pretty interesting so let's put that back on there real quick go ahead and take this off and i'll show you what we're going to do we're going to use the tin man sauce you gotta be very careful with this stuff because one drop and you'll have it from your head to your feet. All right, we're just gonna put a little bit on the first few threads. You don't have to completely smear it all over all the threads because it will get carried down as you screw it on. It'll get pushed down and it will lubricate the threads, but you just wanna put a little lubricant on there that way hopefully if you ever have to go back in here and mess with this down the road it won't uh now we're going to back it off here and you can see as i'm backing it off that it has smeared the anti-seize all the way down so that's why i say you don't need to uh you don't need to coat the whole thing put it on the first few threads screw it on now we're going to take this piece right here and whoop man this stuff is gloppy needs to stir in really bad we'll just put a little bit on here and stick that up and just put your cap back on whoop see it needs stirring bad it's kind of soupy you don't want all that on your brake shoes, so you just want to get off any extra that happens to be on there like this one is doing. That's got the sloppiness off. But anyway, that'll keep it lubed up, keep it moving free. All right, so the next thing I think we're going to do is one of the pieces I forgot in this hardware bag. I didn't think of them until I went to look for it need let's see that little keeper right there and there is a spring washer and there should be two of them and i only need one right now but they may have shorted me accidentally nope there it is there is the spring washer and you have to put your uh This is the park brake arm has to go back on this brake shoe so we've been working it uh the little bit of paint that's in the hole on the brake shoe makes it kind of hard to get on there all you gotta do is put that little thrust spring washer on there work it all the way down you may actually have to take a pair of pliers and hold it i don't know we're gonna see if we can get this clip in there without doing that yep she's going yep there she goes so you can get that clip going in there uh, of course somebody came and got my screwdriver a little while ago so let me find the screwdriver be right back all right so 
we can get her shoved there it went get her all the way in and i will go get a pair of pliers and we will close that gap up right there and uh this will be ready and then i'll show we got to put the take open up the uh part brake cable and get it reattached right here so let me get up some pliers I think I can grab it with some channel locks. I'm not sure. We're going to give it a shot. Sometimes you got to have needle nose pliers, but you can get on it and push down. Sometimes you can use channel locks. Depends on how they're designed. And that's some needle nose, too. Let's see if we can get those on there. There we go. That's it. You just want to pinch it around. And now that's free moving. Now, this cable has got a spring sleeve over it, and you have to push the spring sleeve back and get it over the arm like that. And that's what holds it in place. Now, I've got to take a look here. You got that. You got to make sure that your plunger arm engages your shoe. I'm just kind of looking and trying to remember how to line some of this stuff up because we've got this self-adjuster piece right here and it hooks on and there's a spring on the lower spring that hooks this shoe and that shoe at the bottom. So let's figure out how exactly I want to do this. I'll just let it hang. Hopefully it doesn't come off. It should be fun. Don't roughhouse it. All right. The adjuster wheel will have to go in. And let's see. I believe it's this spring. Or is it this spring? Must be this spring. lower shoe goes on there like that and that hang I think that hangs on there like that that's why I say it's always good to take a picture of it before you tear it down that way you can uh, figure it out okay I have been studying this for a few minutes backtracking from where I tore it apart and how it all goes back together and like I said earlier remember take you some pictures of this stuff I do this stuff every day. I can look at it like a jigsaw puzzle and usually figure it out without too much trouble. But I think what we have decided I'm going to do is I'm going to take the brake shoes themselves and I'm going and go ahead with the new anchor pins and anchor springs and cups, new cups. I'm going to go ahead and anchor both shoes and then I'm going to start assembling all the other parts to it after I get it on there. It's a pretty straightforward process. I don't know that you'll be able to see much from that side, unfortunately. But the anchor pin just slides in from the back. Oh, make sure you catch the right hole. That would be a key. On line up. Come on. Come on. There we go. You line up these pins. We want to make sure that it's lined up. So, got the uh, hold the shoe and the anchor all at the same time. You have to put a finger around behind it. You have to be multi talented and patient. And I have the tool set up there. I didn't look to see which way my slot is. Let's get where I can see. There we go. Push, twist, lock, and it's on there. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. And uh, what I just noticed, and I did not notice before, is the hole where that spring goes through is slotted, so the brake shoes can move just a little bit, which will help me assembling all this stuff. Let's go ahead and put that on and let's not forget we've got to put the uh, park brake bar and spring back in here but until we pull the springs that hold the shoe on really tight we can we can still work it out and get it slipped in so let's get our spring and a cup let's set them on the ground 
sit my cup in the top of it, take my tool, and I sit over the top of it and I pinch it with my finger and hold it all together. All right, and push, twist, lock, and here we go. That one's on. The main thing I'm concerned about right now is I want to get the adjuster and the adjuster spring hooked on the bottom. Uh, let me look real quick, see what y'all can see. Not a lot, but we're going to try to zoom you in and hope that my hands aren't too much in the way because I really want you to see this. But when you don't have a cameraman and you're a lone camera guy, it can be kind of kind of tough. Let's see, there's the adjuster bar. And here's your spring. Spring goes, I'm pretty sure, in that bottom hole. And your adjuster just slips, this hook slips in the hole. And then that spring attaches across the top of it and provides the ratchet. Whoop, <laughs> it's pulling everything loose. It's fine, it's fine, everything's fine. Now, I'm gonna see if I can get this self adjuster to slide in here without everything falling apart. I may have to put this brake adjuster in before I anchor everything down. This may not be how I need to do this. <clears throat> yep, we got to come up with a different method. Use a little brute strength, hold this shoe, push this shoe, and install your self adjuster. And get, to get everything turned around where it's supposed to be. Now, with that's back in, let's get this pushed up where it goes. No, 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 no. Okay, so we've had to stop and punt and back up. Um, I've got to figure out how, the, what the sequence is on this to get it back together. Um, this is the struggle with drum brakes sometimes. They're not that difficult. You just got to remember how they came apart and pieces you got to put back together and in what order. Um, I was not thinking when I put this piece on, this piece actually needs to go on before the springs go on. And this down here, the self adjuster piece at the bottom, I do not have it on here correctly. So we've got to figure that out. I don't think it's gonna be that big a deal but I gotta figure out how it goes back together. So, take it back apart. Okay. Oh, I'm really gonna hate to do this, but I gotta tear that other side down so I can look and see. That's why you yeah, don't tear both sides down at the same time. All right, well, I had to take a couple minutes and figure out what in the heck was going on. So, 
I went ahead off camera and reassembled everything so I wasn't struggling trying to film and trying to figure out what was going on at the same time. Um, we were able to get it put back together. I went around and I pulled the other tire, you can see, off the other side and got a look. And what I found was, is that these brakes have been rebuilt before and somebody put a spring in the wrong location. How they made it work before, I don't know. But when I was trying to put the right spring, the springs as I took them off back in the right position, they weren't fitting. So anyway, I will show you detailed on the other side. All right, well this, this video series is a little bit longer than I typically do on my channel, but I really had a lot of information I wanted to cover. I uh, wanted to uh, go over everything in a nice, neat form, and I ended up having to break it into two videos. And that video is already shot, and as a matter of fact, it's coming on the screen right now.